No country has ever prospered that failed to put its own interests first. We will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. New Right Network presents, right now, the featured podcast of New Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. Hi, this is Rob Harper with the New Right Network, Right Now Podcast. I'm your host, and my guest today is Andrew Says. Andrew, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good, good. Andrew is a freelance writer and political commentator. Andrew has gained a lot of fame with his commentary on Canadian and U.S. politics. Andrew, do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Well, I have a background in uh, radio broadcasting and writing and public relations. Um, started a YouTube channel a few years ago. Started getting some traction probably six months in. Um, just been freelance writing, doing video commentary. Uh, this year in 2019, I started going to doing man on the streets interviews for uh, topical issues, political issues, things like that. And it's really been a good time. It's been rough recently due to YouTube. Uh, really trying to put the stranglehold on everybody. So we've seen a significant drop in reach in that sort of regard. So that's mainly why I do what I do to call out media bias. That's mainly why I got into it. And now it's just a battle against the algorithms, I guess you could say. Where do you think all this came from? Was it with Justin coming in or was it a long time coming? It was just percolating and now it's starting to, you know, be seen. It's been percolating, and it's uh, complacency. I had a semi-argument slash debate with somebody the other day where I was discussing how, uh, because our Thanksgiving in Canada comes right uh, around Columbus Day every year, and there's this new trend out there um, where Columbus is an evil person. He's one of the worst people of all time. How dare he discover the Americas, and how dare he go to war with the tribes, the native tribes, because as we know, all native tribes are one and they think the same and they are all peaceful and never have done anything bad. Right. So there's this narrative that Christopher Columbus is terrible. And the person asked me, why do I care about this? And I said, uh, the reason I've started to care about this is because people have become so complacent that people are now rewriting history. In Canada, I forget where it was, but they took down the uh, statue of our very first prime minister because he's so terrible and evil. So that's the reason why I think these things are happening. People have become complacent. It's not Justin Trudeau's fault. He has just, uh, you know, he has his quips that he's famous for, his people kind, um, saying that it's 2015, therefore we should put people in his cabinet just based on their gender. Uh, he's definitely perpetuated it, and that's what the left-leaning parties have further perpetuated. Even our conservative party is way to the left of anything libertarian or Republican that you could think of. It's all the same song and dance, which is why people are getting fed up, which is why uh, conservative leaders have been elected. I think seven out of ten uh, premiers, which is equivalent to a governor, have been elected in the last five to seven years. It's all swinging. So we'll see what happens in the federal election. It's not Trudeau's fault. It's been percolating for a while because people don't pay attention to anything. Right. And it goes from being tolerant and friendly to getting you know, pushed over and walked all over in terms of your ethics. Right, I, I agree. When people don't pay attention, you can easily slide anything over on them. Right, now you mentioned healthcare. Here in the States, we're grappling with that right now. What exactly, or could you explain to the listeners the healthcare system in Canada? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, our taxes are higher because we have free healthcare. But, for example, in a place, let's say California, where you have a lot of uh, undocumented immigrants, got to be careful not to say the forbidden word of illegal here. Right. Um, the, uh, you have long waits for hospital lines. Now, you can go to a free clinic where you might – there's one down the street for me. There's, I'd say, probably five in my city alone, a city of 180,000 people. Um, you walk in, you sit, you write down what you're there for. You check in, essentially, you wait for maybe an hour. The doctor sees you. He might prescribe you something. He might send you to a specialist, something like that. Now, things like specialists, that might take you like six months to, to see because there's a huge wait list for that. Um, people aren't dying when they're waiting. 
but they could if they waited too long. And that's the reason why a lot of people go down to the United States. You still pay for your prescription health care. You still pay for ambulance rides. Uh, if you go to the hospital, you're likely in a semi-private room. So it, it's not amazing. But like, if you're poor, then you're obviously going to appreciate it. The difference is uh, with plans like Bernie Sanders and I think Elizabeth Warren might differ on him a little bit on this. But Bernie Sanders doesn't want to offer any free health care options. You can get an OK private health care option here for $100 Canadian, which is probably about $65, $70 a month for American dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you'll get a lot of things covered in better health care. It's the option of both, which I think makes people all right with it here. Whereas Bernie Sanders touts Canada's health care system all the time, and he doesn't even want that. He wants something much, much worse. And I don't understand that. Whenever you look into Bernie Sanders' policies, they all fall apart. They don't make any sense. Right. In terms of our health care, it's okay. It's not the best. But people have had it for 40, 50 years. They don't seem to want to give it up. Right. So let me just make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. So you have the universal health care that takes care of all the citizens, but you can also pay for private insurance. Yes. So you get, uh, just like your driver's license, you get a health card, which is your public health card uh, issued whichever province you're in to so every- if you to everyone okay. uh, you go to the hospital you present that you don't get charged for it if you do get private health care you get a private health care card which is what you present instead you have to turn in your id which you have to renew every five years anyway so it's not like form this line give up your id your your freedoms are lost okay you, you, you get a private health care card from whichever company you're working with uh I can't name, there's Blue Cross is the only one I can name off the top of my head. Um, And that's it. You get a new card and that's what you present to people. Depending on your coverage, you get allotted a certain amount per year for medication, for eye care, for things like that. So if you don't, if you want better health care, you can pay for it. That's the, that's the simple, that's why it works, I think. Right. Okay. So here in the States, you, you you know, you work for a company, they provide you with health care. If you leave the, if you leave the company, you go to another company then they provide you with health care also. So in Canada, if you're working for a particular company and you have the private health care, if you leave that company, does the other company provide you with health care or is there an option you can take it or not take it? Um, you can always not take it if you don't want to, but you'll see on job postings here the type of health care they provide. They'll provide you, um, not every job, of course. You'll, you're talking about corporate. Uh, a, a nice job, let's say, over 50000 Canadian a year, which is not much compared to American salary, right. mind you. But you go, uh, jobs I've applied for, it says full dental medical coverage. So that would be a higher tier of health care. They're offering you a private health care option through their okay. company. If you leave there, then you're back to public unless you get a different job with its own private health care. And the public automatically kicks in if you leave and you don't have it. Well, you got to do some paperwork, but yes. Okay, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Because like I said here, you know, you have it, you don't have it, you know, go to the next company and they have it. But they've definitely, we've definitely been pushing that, you know, with the whole socialist idea. What are you hearing on the street from people about socialism? Um, <laughs> of course, they always refer to Scandinavian countries. But <laughs> I saw a good quote the other day is you can't have socialism without having capitalism first because that's how they pay for it. Yeah. And uh, the Scandinavian countries will tell you themselves that they're not socialist. They have, I believe, higher free market index do- scores than North Americans do. And they're just a small homogenized countries where you can slowly increase your social safety nets. In terms of socialism, you're only going to get that from college students when... Uh, <laughs> when they're not really paying for anything. I remember when I was younger, I had a conversation with my friend and uh, we were saying, you know what, isn't it weird how we were thought to, we were instilled in us to think that socialism is a bad word. And then a few years later, I only knew how wrong I was when (laughs) when you start paying your own bills and everything. So I don't think people have a full understanding of socialism. I don't see anyone touting it here. You have to think again, we don't have as many huge cities as you guys have. You guys have... Places where you have football teams dwarf our, our cities. Like I was watching the Kansas City game the, yesterday, and they, it's much bigger than most of our cities. We have Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, and Vancouver. Those are our biggest cities, talking about over a million people. Maybe Edmonton as well. So there's a lot of people in between who don't buy into the the monolith of, of city center thought. And even people within those 
are immigrants from from places that don't necessarily agree with that. We have so many Chinese immigrants here that do not want any form of socialism or communism. That's why the whole uh, the whole method that the Democrats in the United States have pull people in from other places to vote for us doesn't exactly work here. So the man on the streets that you're doing there in Canada, does the po- the politics of the U.S. has it ever come up? It does come up. I've done videos explicitly about. Uh, the United States, and I will be doing more because it's interesting topics to see how much people believe. Like I said, it's a uh, it's soft bias here where they just gloss over statements and pretend as if they are fact. That is the worst thing that I see. We have a channel here that's a 24-hour news channel that has 25% of the screen is dedicated to live news where the rest is just uh, tickers, sports news, weather, that sort of thing. And the things they put on their headlines If you were to just read them and believe them, then you'd come away with a much worse impression of U.S. politics than if you actually knew what you were talking about. Now, when I ask students in Toronto, for example, about Donald Trump, they have uh, a warped view. And but at the same time, they have some sort of solace that it's not there and they can live in their fantasy utopia that they believe is Canada. But it does affect them whether they want to believe it or not. Uh, how they view U.S. politics, it's hard to tell unless you start getting into deep conversations with them. But Canadians tend to shy away from these conversations when they do not know what they're talking about, which is something different that you see on videos like I was watching today, Fleck is talks, uh, slightly offensive, where people will just say anything and then call other people idiots when they clearly have no idea what they're talking about. At least in Canada, I can say that the people will say, I don't know enough about that, which can be a cop-out, of course, but most of the time they are being truthful. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so you said that they'll just like gloss it over, I won't say much, but going back to our conversation earlier as to the things that are taking place in Canada, what are people saying about this? I mean, are they concerned about the jihadi guy, the Omar uh, Jessica and the comedian. I mean, we hear about it, and of course, we're told about it because we're we're said that hey, look, look at what's happening here, you know, and they're going to make this right. But what are the folks? I mean, is anyone being open? Or are they afraid to give their you know true opinion as to what's happening? People are afraid to give their opinion, but they also unfortunately do not care. You you see the news cycle, even when Justin Trudeau did blackface, it was in the news for two days. The conservatives pretended they were offended by it because they wanted liberals to vote for them. And then two days later, they did not care. The federal debates, nobody talked about Jihadi Jack. Nobody talked about blackface. Nobody talked about the one candidate, um, Elizabeth May, which is the Green Party leader. Uh, I believe it was in 2015 or 2016, she said that he was a better Canadian than than the current conservative. So it's really become a a point where I think people need to stand up and say something. You don't have to go out and make videos. You don't have to go out and protest. You just talk to people and try to change their minds for what you see as a better future. And uh, watch my videos. YouTube is throttling me. As Tim Poole talks about, they downrank downrank anything that's not Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC, so people need to share things that they agree with. You don't have to say anything controversial, but other people do the talking for you if you agree with their opinion, but at least try to do something because, as you've said, complacency is what has got us in this political correct nightmare that we are currently in.